Today we're doing module four, lesson 31. And in fact, this week we're gonna finish up module four and on Friday you will have your module four test. Today your learning goal is to use what you know about estimation to help you divide decimals by other decimals, okay? On Friday we already learned how to divide decimals by decimals, right? Today we're gonna add on by using estimation to help us figure out if our answer is reasonable or not. Okay, remembering what we learned last week. If it asks us to do 1.5 divided by 0 0.05, what's our first step? We want to write it as a fraction, right? So when I write a division expression as a fraction, what number always goes on the top? What's the numerator? Whole. The whole. What's the whole here? Okay, 1.5. What always goes on the bottom? Divisor. The divisor. What's the divisor? 0 0.05. 0 .05. So do these, does that fraction have the same value as that expression? Yeah. It does. Go ahead and write that down. Now remember, our next step is we want to, quote, unquote, get rid of the decimal point. What would I need to do to this top number? How many spaces do I need to move that decimal point? One. That's the same as multiplying by what? Ten. Ten. Okay. What about the bottom? How many spaces do I have to move the decimal point? That's the same as multiplying by? Can I multiply this fraction by 10 over 100? No. Why not? Why not? Ani? 10 over, I love how you said that. 10 over 100 is not equal to 1, so it would change the value. What should I multiply it by instead? Ani? Which means I would need to move this decimal point one more spot, right? And I have to add a zero there. Okay, so then what's the new version of this fraction? 150 over what? Five. Does this have the same value as this? Does it have the same value as this? Does it have the same value as this? So let's simplify it. What's 150 divided by five? So what's 1.5 divided by 0 0.05? Very nice. Today's math lesson tells us that we need to first estimate. Now estimation gives us an approximation or gives us an area, a zone, where we think our answer will be in. That helps us decide at the end if we know that if our answer is um, reasonable or not, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is just like what I did last week. I'm going to write my division expression into a fraction. You can see I put the whole 78.4 as the numerator and the divisor 0 0.7 as the denominator. Now I wanted to quote unquote get rid of those decimal places, so I shifted them all over, effectively multiplying that fraction by what version of one? 10 over 10. 10 over 10. When I did that, my new fraction becomes 784 divided by seven. Does that have the same value as my expression up here? Yes, okay. Now, using what we know about math facts, let's estimate. How do I write this fraction, 784 over 7, as one division expression? Well, it would be 784 divided by what divisor? 7. When we're estimating with division, should we round the divisor or should we round the whole? The whole. So we want to see now what number, what whole that's pretty close to 784 would be compatible with seven. Well, how about 770? Is that easily divisible by seven? Right? So remember that these wavy um, equal signs show you that you're dividing, you're estimating. Okay? So what I did again is I know I'm trying to divide by seven. So I want to use what I know about math facts to find a whole that's easier in my head to divide by seven. Now 770, do you agree that that's pretty close to 784? Do you agree that it's easy to divide by seven? What is 770 divided by 7 in your head? 110. So that tells you, is this, is this the exact answer to this math expression? No, but it's telling you that your answer should be pretty close to 110. Now that we have our estimation in our head, we know that the answer should be pretty close to what number? 110. Okay, now we can use the standard algorithm to divide. Again, my actual problem is 784 divided by 7. It's not 770 divided by 7. That was my estimation problem. 
So if my hole is 784, does the hole live in the house or does the hole knock on the door? Live in the house. So let's set it up. We have 784 inside the house and the divisor of 7 is knocking on the door. What's the first digit we have? 7. What, pl what uh, place value is it? Hundreds. So if I have seven hundreds and I want to split it into seven groups, how many hundreds can be in each group? One. One. If mom's going to multiply, she'll get seven. Brother will subtract. No, sister will subtract with zero. Then brother will bring down our next place value, which is the? Tens. tens. How many tens do we have? Eight. 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 If I have eight tens and I want to split them into seven groups, how much can go into each group? One. One. Ten. So I'm going to put a one in the tens place. When sister... Mom multiplies, she gets seven tens, sister subtracts, and there's one ten left. Brother's going to bring down the ones for a total of how many ones? Fourteen. If I have fourteen ones, I want to split it into seven equal groups. How many goes into each group? Two. Two what? One, one. Ones. Good, so I'll write a two in the ones place. Mom will multiply, sister will subtract, there's nothing left for brother to bring down, and we're done. So what's the actual answer? So therefore, seven... What was it? 78.4, right? Divided by 0 0.7 is 112. Based on our estimate of 110, is our answer reasonable? Yes. Okay, and that's how we can use estimation to help us check. Again, this problem is really asking how many times could I have a group of 7 tenths be in 78.4? And how many groups of 7 tenths are there in 78.4? 100 and... Very good. 